Hello Duelists, welcome back to the Crown Corp channel, my name is Bram and today I have a new setup guide for you for setting up the new versions of the apps as well as a new version of the, of the server because they all support local multiplayer now. The multiplayer functionality hasn't been tested thoroughly yet so there may still be some bugs or other small problems and that's why I'd like for the people who are really dedicated to this project to download the apps and the new server and help me test it. And if you find any bugs, please report them to me on Discord or here in the comments on YouTube. This will be the last time that players need to set up their own local server. In the next release of the apps, they will be able to connect to a hosted online server. So no more messing around with setting up your own server. If you'd rather wait until then, I understand that because setting up your own server can look a bit difficult or intimidating. But for those of you who would like to test multiplayer already, let's get started. So first, let's talk about the requirements. Because you'll be testing multiplayer, you need to have two duelists. If you're a patron, you'll need an iPhone or an Android device. If you're not a patron, then the iOS applications aren't available for you right now, only the Android applications. It's also recommended to use two devices per duelist. So two iPhones or two Android phones or an Android phone and an iPhone, or you can even use tablets if you want to. It's possible to switch between the Smart Dual Disk and the Smart Dual Gazer apps on one device, but it's not recommended. You'll also need to have a computer to host the server. This just has to be one computer. You don't need a computer for each Dualist. It can be a Windows computer or a MacBook or an iMac. It can probably also be a Linux device, but I haven't tested it yet. So the next step is installing the Smart Dual Disk, the Smart Dual Gazer and the Smart Dual Server. Uh, so first, if you're a patron and you use iOS, you should be able to get the Smart Dual Disk and the Smart Dual Gazer via the Play Store. Uh, if you're a patron and you use an iPhone or an iPad, you should have received an email for both the, the Smart Dual Disk and the Smart Dual Gazer saying that you can get the apps via test flight. And if you're not a patron and you have an Android device, you can download the Smart Dual Disk and the Smart Dual Gazer via GitHub. So the links for that will be in the description. All you need to do is go to the is download the latest version of the Smart Dual Disk. So here that's Smart Dual Disk v070. You just have to download the APK file and install it. And then the same thing for the Smart Dual Gazer. So you just download the latest APK. So uh, version 040. Uh, download the APK and just install it. Then to get the server, you, this is something you also get from GitHub. So uh, yeah, maybe a bit confusing with all the different versions, but the latest version of the Smart Dual server is uh, 030. And what you need to do is download the zip file. Then something you'll also need to be able to use the Smart Dual server is Node.js. I'll leave a link for this in the description. But normally when you open this website, uh, it, should says, uh, it should give you a download link for the platform that you're using. I'm on macOS right now, but uh, it should say download for Windows if you're, uh, if you're on Windows. And all you need to do is download the, the last recommended version. So you just click on recommend it. It will download the file. All you need to do is just follow the wizard and install it. Then first, let's talk about how you can host a server. This is something only one duelist has to do. So the one who has access to the computer. Um, so I'm here on GitHub and I'm going to download the zip of the latest version of the Smart Dual server. Uh, it should have gone to my downloads. So if we take a look there, yep, it's there. To extract the zip, if you're on Windows, what you need to do is right click and then click an extract option. But if you're on macOS like me, all you need to do is double click it. And something you need to do uh, once you have a folder is click on it and make sure that you see these uh, folders and files in there. Okay, so if you have that, uh, you can actually return to the, the previous folder, which is downloads for me. Uh, and then what you need to do if you're on Windows is open it in PowerShell. So how you do that? Well, you need to hold the shift button on your keyboard. This is really important. Hold your shift button, then right click the folder uh, and you should be able to see an option open in PowerShell. If you're like me and you're on macOS, what you need to do is hold the option button on your keyboard, right click, and it should give you the option copy Smart Dual Server as path name. Then if you're on macOS, something else that you need to do is actually open a terminal. So next, something else that you only need to do on macOS is actually type in a command CD uh, and then command V because you copied the path name from, from this folder, then click enter. 
and you should be able to see that we're now in, in the folder. You should see something similar if you're on Windows. So now that we've opened either PowerShell or the terminal and we're in the SmartDuel server folder, we need to execute three commands. The first one is npm install. The second one is npm run build. And then the last one is node src forward slash index.js. And then you should see a message like this. So server listening on port and then a number. Uh, and this number is actually important to keep in mind later when we're going to need it in the smart dual disk and the smart dual gazer. So now you can just leave it open, make sure that the server keeps running. And now it's time to set up the smart dual disk and the smart dual gazer. All right, so now that the server is up and running and listening to port 8080, it's time to start using the smart dual disk and the smart dual gazer. So I have a second device open here. It's actually the macOS application of the smart dual disk, something I use for development. But more importantly, this here is the screen of my phone on which I'm now going to open the smart dual disk. Let's start with that one. Uh, so we just click on initiate link here, head over to the dual tab. Uh, and this is where we have to enter some information. So we actually have to enter the local IP address of the computer that is hosting the smart dual server. Um, so just as a disclaimer, this is actually not the IP address you use to go online with. It's just the local IP address you use in your own local network. And it's perfectly safe. You don't really need to worry too much about it. Uh, but to save some time, I'm just going to show you a short clip of the previous setup guide on how you can get your IP address. There is one more thing you need, a piece of info, uh, and that is your local IP address. For this, open the command prompt and type in ipconfig. You'll now be able to see your local IP address, which you'll need later. And when you've done that, you need the IP address. I've already shown you how you get it on Windows, but on macOS, you have to go to Network Preferences, and then you'll see your local IP address of the network you're connected on. So now that we know the local IP address of the computer that is running the Smart Dual server, it's time to enter that information. Uh, so here in IP address, I'm just going to type in mine, which is 192.168.0.106. And then for the port, this is the number that you should see in the terminal or in PowerShell, which in my case is 8080. Then I also need to do the same on the, on the macOS application, but I already pre-filled this information. Uh, so now what we need to do is click on enter dual room. And then we can actually choose one of the two pre-built decks. So on my phone, I'm going to use Kaiba's deck. And then here on macOS, I'm going to use Yugi's deck. So now that we're in the dual room, one dualist will need to create a room and the other person will need to join the room. And we can actually see that two sockets have been connected here, uh, which is good. So I'm on my phone, I'm going to click on create room. And then we see that the room has been created with this name. Uh, and then on the other phone, normally, uh, you have to enter the room name. So it is PXNNF. And now we can click on enter room. And now we see that the duel has started. No need to worry about this. Um, let me just make this a bit bigger. All right. So now we see that the duel has started um, and all players can see their own side of the field. But on my phone, if I scroll up now, you see that I can see my opponent's side of the field. So for example, if I were to play Jack's Knight, I would be able to see it here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to start the Smart Duel Gazer first. So I'm just going to close, or I should say move this application to the background. All right, it is still running, but just in the background. And I'm going to open the Smart Dual Gazer. So here you actually do the same. You just type in the local IP address and also the ports. Now you click on Connect. Now you also have to type in the room name here, which I actually forgot, but luckily you can also see it's in the terminal or in PowerShell. 
All right, let's enter the room. And then here we can choose who we want to spectate. Um, so the first person is the person that created the dual room. So for me, that's my Android phone. And then the second person is the dualist who joined the room, which is for me, the macOS application. Uh, I'm just going to use the, the first one, that's fine. And then I'm going to click on spectate. And now let's rotate the phone, look at the ground and try to place down a play mat. And actually the rotation is a bit off. This is a bug that we're still working on. Uh, and also make the scale a bit smaller. So now we can see the field in the gazer. And now let's try to actually play a card in the macOS application and then see what happens. Just messing some more with the scale here. Okay, so let's try to summon Jack's Knight. Boom, there we go. He appeared, which is nice. And then now let's try to head over to the other application again, the Smart Dual Disk. Okay, and now when we scroll up, we can see that our opponent has actually summoned Jack's Knight. So that's all working. Uh, so now let's try to summon Axad Cannon. Let's summon him and then switch back to the other application. This is why I said that it's not ideal to do it on, uh, on one device. It's definitely way better to do it on two devices. But we can see that Axad Cannon has actually been summoned to the field. So yeah, that's all working. And now on the macOS application, I can see that my opponent has summoned Axad Cannon. Okay, so now let's try some other things. Let's try to uh, use Sage's Stone, although we can't really use it right now. Let's try to set Wabaku, play another card, maybe screw the rules and summon Dark Paladin to the field, why not? And so yeah, this is how multiplayer works. Uh, some feedback I've already received is that there is no phasing system right now, which is true. Um, that is something we probably will take a look at later. But when we do that, we also have to look into how we would create a phasing system that is also usable by a physical dual disk. So yeah, it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but to get started, well, it's definitely more ideal to be able to hear your opponent. So maybe if you're together in the same room, you can just talk to each other. Once online multiplayer is released, it will be more ideal to call each other over Discord and uh, tell, the, tell your opponent what you're doing when you enter which phase and all that. Um, but yeah, this is how offline multiplayer works in a nutshell. I hope you're excited about it and I hope you'll be able to test it yourself. As I said, if you can find any bugs, please let us know on Discord so that we can fix them. But yeah, for now, that's all I actually wanted to show you. So I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you have trouble setting up the server or downloading the applications, also make sure to let me know. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and I also hope to see you in the next video.